Mm. I'm not ashamed to admit that when it comes to a personal God, I'm epistemologically agnostic. But you don't have to be a scientist to know that science absolutely relies upon facts, observations of the natural world. And you don't have to be a priest to know that Christianity places a strong emphasis upon faith, including a faith that a supernatural force can have an effect in this natural world. Science by necessity limits itself to natural causes because those are the only kinds of causes that can be tested by the scientific method, probed by the scientific method, proved by the scientific method. Supernatural causes, should they exist, are not so testable, probable, provable. And if you could prove the supernatural, what would be the value in the meaning of faith? Nor is science a monolithic enterprise up against religion or something like that. You know, science is a multifarious process with multifarious purposes. We have a technological, productive side of science, such as uh, that which produced this car, the technology that drives it, or the camera that I'm using right now. Then there's also uh, environmental, social science, which might seem to be in conflict with the technological, productive science sometimes. Questions like, what happens when I turn on this car and the engine starts running and I put out 19 pounds of CO2 for every gallon of gasoline that I put out. I mean, that's going to be a question we have to deal with. So what's the purpose of this video series? The purpose of this video series is to respond to the Institute for Creation Research's video series. That's a fact. I was responding on their comment section until they shut them down. Apparently, open communication is not part of the science language for the Institute of Creation Research, so I felt it necessary to produce this particular video series. In this, we're going to take a look at the arguments used by the Institute for Creation Research, see how well they hold up as facts, and maybe have a little bit of fun along the way. Now, you've got to realize that there isn't a conflict between science and religion. That's a false dichotomy. There is a conflict between science of today and science of thousands of years ago, but that's a different matter altogether. I know that even though I've said that I don't think there's a conflict between science and religion, that some people will find my video series as an attack on religion, which it really is not meant to do. It's meant to be an opening of communication. Uh, I think that dialogue, open dialogue, is key to understanding each other, one other sides. So, in that vein, I will never shut down the comments on my video series, and I hope maybe by the time I put up this video, the ICR will have put their comments back up and allowed discussion there. I also think that in proper humility and good perspective, we have to understand that all of our worldviews are underpinned with uncertainty. Even if your worldview claims certainty, demands certainty, that too is still underpinned with uncertainty, and the scientific endeavor is no less underpinned with uncertainty, but it does have one great aspect to it, that it encompasses a wider range of facts, and by doing so allows us over time to become less wrong. I'm Christian Shorey of the Earth and Environmental Systems Podcast, and I approve this message, though Rick Perry probably doesn't. Hello? Anybody home? <laughs>